a breakthrough for scientists after they had a 20-minute conversation with a humpback whale. Beneath the ocean surface, an ancient conversation hums in rapid clicks, messages passed between giants with brains six times our own. Using advanced AI, scientists are listening like never before, and what they have uncovered is something no one would have guessed in a million years. What they are finding is revealing an entirely new way to understand communication between intelligent life forms on Earth. Since the dawn of ocean exploration, the vast, mysterious ocean has held its secret from us. For centuries, sailors who returned from long journeys told incredible stories of what some people believe to be mythical sea serpents and, more believably, the haunting, melodic calls of whales. These sounds were just part of the sea's marvel, beautiful but barely explored. These marine animals have been a subject of admiration because of their size, but we never truly believed they had a mind that could match their might. For man, they were just resources to get blubber for lamps and bones for corsets until one unexpected event. The call of the deep in the 1970s, the world opened its eyes and was on the new wave of a new environmental awakening. It was there and then that a quiet discovery would change everything. Scientists who had been studying marine life for ages took an interest in humpback whales and soon set out to sea to record the vocalizations of these whales, and what they found was astonishing. The moans and groans of these animals weren't just random, they were intricate sounds that evolved over time, lasting several hours. The recordings were saved and then compiled into an album called Songs of the Humpback Whale. This scientific documentation was the start of what would get the attention of the public and also tickle the imagination of many. This one album helped take off a global movement that saved these magnificent creatures from the brink of extinction. As scientists went further into bioacoustics, which is the study of animal sounds, they were left with more questions than answers. Early researchers in the field used basic recording tools and spent hours carefully listening and analyzing, all in an effort to understand how whales communicate. They couldn't quite place what the sounds were. There were theories of the whale songs being a simple mating call, a call for help in time of danger, or just a form of communication, no one truly knew. For decades, we could only guess, held back by the sheer volume of data and the limits of our own senses. All we could hear were the sounds, but we didn't have the tools to understand them, and this is where a guy named Dr. David Gruber came in with a bright idea. Dr. David Gruber, an American marine biologist and National Geographic researcher, believed that to understand whales, we didn't need the old tools used back then but something new and technologically advanced. He looked to a different field for inspiration, one that was far from the sea but focused on space, called the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or SETI. The idea behind SETI is to listen for signals from space in hopes of one day hearing a message from another civilization. Dr. Gruber thought, what if we've been looking for alien life in all the wrong places? He thought an alien intelligence could be right here on our own planet, in the form of a whale, the humpback whale. This crazy, almost sci-fi-like notion was the beginning of Project SETI, which means the Cetacean Translation Initiative. Not only did Dr. Gruber bring this insane idea to life, but he also brought together an extraordinary team consisting of marine biologists, computer scientists, linguists, and roboticists, all joined by a shared vision. Their aim wasn't just to document sounds, they were planning to do the impossible. Their plan was to create a two-way dialogue with another species. How was this group of people planning to listen to voices from a world so different from ours? To truly connect with whales, they needed more than just ears. They needed a way in. The dream team the team Dr. David Gruber built for Project SETI was unlike any scientific group you've ever seen. It was a fusion of brilliant minds from all kinds of fields who at first might not seem to have much in common, but were all united by the same audacious goal to crack the code of whale communication. This unconventional alliance was exactly what the project needed. Understanding the voices of the whales was a complicated task that no single discipline would have been able to solve. It's no surprise that these chosen experts who are masters in their own fields were picked. This collaboration was the engine of Project SETI, leading to something incredible. At the heart of the project were the people who had spent their lives in the water with these animals. People like Shane Jero, for example, who is a marine biologist, spent over a decade studying a single family of sperm whales near the Caribbean island of Dominica. This wasn't just a job for him, he was as dedicated to his job as he was to loving these magnificent creatures. He even knew the whales by name and watched them grow up. This long-term, intimate fieldwork became the bedrock of Project SETI. He was a great asset to the team.
Who better to understand the workings of whales than Shane? Apart from Shane Jarrow's contributions, another asset to the team that wasn't present in the old research team was natural language processing thanks to AI. This is where the start of what seemed impossible becomes a modern marvel. Before Project SETI became a thing, the idea of translating whale communication was a figment of researchers' imagination because of the limitations of technology at the time. However, a major breakthrough was on the horizon, not just in marine biology but also in technology. Around 2019, the team came to a realization of getting the technology needed to build an underwater recording studio. This studio would be the first studio that could finally be able to translate the language of sperm whales. And just like the thought of getting on the moon, this discovery ignited the project and made the impossible suddenly feel within reach. The island of Dominica became the heart of this project. It was the perfect place for this kind of work, with its volcanic landscape and waters that get incredibly deep just off the coast. Its unique geography allows sperm whales to swim close to land, making them easier to study than in most other places. Not only that, but the island also has a stable and good amount of whale population, with many of the same families returning to the island year after year. It was also the same island Shane Jarrow's decades of work started on. With this newfound possibility, Project SETI officially launched in 2020. The initiative received a massive boost from the TED Audacious Project, which provided $33 million in funding to get it off the ground and rolling. The funding allowed them to build an incredible team and also begin their first major task, to create what they call a 20-kilometer by 20-kilometer underwater listening and recording studio off the coast of Dominica. This setup would allow the AI to not only hear the whales but also to understand who was speaking, to whom, and in what social situation. This was the technological bridge they needed to cross to go from listening to truly understanding. The two groups, the field scientists and the tech experts, worked together in a way that had never been done before. The biologists provided the deep knowledge and context, while the computer scientists brought the tools and power to sort the data. They worked together in a close partnership. The hands-on research guided the technology, and the technology helped them uncover new discoveries. This collaboration was Project SETI's greatest strength, allowing them to tackle the problem from all angles. What made them different from past efforts to understand animal language was how they combined knowledge from different fields and worked as one team. With this incredible team in place, they were ready to tackle the next big hurdle. How do you collect sound in the deep without asking a whale to wear a mic? The team had a bold answer to everyone's question. The oceans and the working technology, the main tool and part of the plan that would seal it all together would be the sensors. These sensors are designed and deployed arrays of hydrophones, which is another fancy word for underwater microphones. They are placed on the ocean floor. They do exactly what a normal microphone would do, but a million times better. They not only amplify the sounds from these creatures, but they are also listening stations, placed in a grid-like pattern to constantly record everything 24-7. It works like how a room filled with microphones on the wall would be able to catch any sound anytime, even as little as a pin dropping. The same goes for the hydrophones, which the Project SETI team did on a large scale, which can detect where any sound under the ocean comes directly from. By using this network of hydrophones, they could pinpoint a whale's clicks and figure out which particular whale was making a specific sound. This was a game-changer for the expedition. It wasn't enough to just hear a whale. They also needed to know which whale was talking. To get an even clearer picture of the whale, the team had another brilliant idea of sending in a robotic fleet. Since it was impossible to get a whale to wear a mic, they could send out autonomous drones and robotic systems to get close to the whales. These robots were designed to place non-invasive suction cup tags onto the whale's backs. These tags were packed with sensors that not only recorded the audio but also the whale's movement at any depth, its heart rate, and its social interactions with other whales. This was another important piece of data needed to understand what the sounds made by the whales meant. The hydrophone network could tell them what was said and by whom, while the tags provided the context, which could determine whether the whale was making a sound while hunting for food or whether it was socializing with its family. This behavioral data gave the AI the vital clues it needed to understand the reasons behind the clicks.